Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Marsha. Hi Kelly. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Good. Uh, had Pretty exciting weather here in Seattle. A little <laughs> unusual for us that we had a, a huge snore, excuse me, snore, a huge <laughs> snowstorm Storm. come through, um, and it was it was actually, um, well, I thought I was going to like it more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was beautiful, and I took Enzo out for walks in it every day, and and uh, you know, I really. Uh, and there were so many people out walking and with their dogs and it was, it was beautiful. And it was just, you know, it is, not, but I, um, I, I think what was difficult for me is um, I felt very unsettled because I was listening all day long to the impeachment hearings mm-hmm. and that sort of um, got me wound up. So it was difficult for me to sort of fully enjoy the, um, you know, just yeah. the, and then also we're in the middle of a pandemic. All we do is stay at home. So <laughs> yeah. that, that sense of like, oh, I get to stay home and have a fire, like, well, and cook and make bread. I mean, and that's you what did I do. that yesterday. And the day yeah, that's what I do all the time. So, um, yeah. and then I was sort of wound up as probably most people were wound up. And anyway, uh, so, but the snow has melted. But um, I do have a funny story to tell about the snow. I um, on I had an eye ex- an eye exam scheduled for Tuesday at seven fifty a.m. So very early, and um, I was concerned about getting the car out. Even though the snow was melting, I was a little concerned about getting the car out. So I, um, on Monday afternoon, I got the car out, no problem. Since I got it out, I went to the grocery store, went to my brother's ha- house to drop off some gr- groceries, and then I came back and. As I was carrying things in, I made a couple trips across the deck, and at one point I slipped, and because it's now the snow's getting all slushy and and messy, and I slipped and and went fell down. I was totally fine; didn't hurt myself at all. Um, continued with my business. The next day, I'm getting ready to leave the house at like at you know a little after seven to go to my appointment, and I cannot find my car keys anywhere, and I'm run, looking everywhere. The place where I normally put them, it's not there because I know I've lost my keys mm-hmm. in the past. I know how it's frustrating when you're trying to get out of the house. So I have this bowl, this fish bowl. I always put them in. Not there. Not in any coat pockets. Not in my purse. Not in my knitting bag. I'm just like, where can they possibly be? Can't find them. I do find the the second pair that I set that I have. So I go to my appointment come back later after running a couple of errands, come back and the snow has melted more. And I find my keys with the house key and everything on the deck that when I fell, I think they fell out of my pocket and they fell into a snow drift. (laughs) And now the snow had melted and there they were. At least your snow melted fast. (laughs) I know. Well, it was raining. We just, so what happened is it started, I think Friday we had a little dusting of snow and I actually posted a picture on Friday afternoon. I, I, walked down to Kim's house and picked her up. And then we walked to my brother's house and we sat in his garden. He made us tea and we sat in his little garden folly. I posted a picture on Instagram of that. Um, and there was a couple comments too about it being cold. Well, my brother being my brother, he has heat out there, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, so it was very pleasant to sit out there on a snowy day because you have heat. But anyway, um, then that night it just started coming down and it snowed all day. I mean, all Friday night, Friday morning, all, or excuse me, Saturday morning, all Saturday and into Sunday, just, it never stopped snowing. Mm-hmm. And, um, we had a, I mean, eight, some pl- about eight inches probably at my house, uh, mm-hmm. of snow. That's a lot of snow for us. We don't usually get that much, but of course yeah. then Sunday, Late Sunday afternoon and evening, it just turned to rain and just 
then it just becomes soup out there, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and then you just, and then you just want it gone at that point. Um, but uh, it's funny, you know, um, you can tell you are a Seattleite because you post pictures of the snow and you talk about the snow and <laughs> people are out there with their cross country skis and, and making snowmen. And I think other parts of the country and the world where they get lots of snow, they don't even talk about the snow probably. But <laughs> right. Right. It's the places that only get it once or twice a year. And, yeah. yeah. Like if you, ha- if you had snow in, Salinas. Oh my God! If we had snow in Salinas, right, that would be super unusual. Yeah. Well, and then I've been watching the news, and there's snow, uh, pretty severe snowstorms across the country. And I saw like, yeah. down in Texas, uh, lots and lots of snow, and these horrible uh, car pile ups on the mm-hmm. freeways, and and uh, so and powers out, powers out. Yeah, yeah. I really, um, oh yeah. That's a, so, I mean, your situation was a lot of snow and um, you didn't really necessarily enjoy it, but it wasn't dangerous. But yeah, it sounds I, like I the had, snow in Texas is is yeah. a really dangerous situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we wish everybody in Texas well and across yeah. the country that are experiencing pretty severe storms and power outages. And mm-hmm. um, I was, I'm lucky I had power and... Um, you know, I had heat and, uh, um, and I, and I, you know, because I didn't have to try and get to work either. Right. Um, so I know how frustrating that can be. Yeah. So anyway. Well, I'm going to make everyone jealous Mm -hmm. because I am at the moment sitting in the trailer. Um, I didn't have time today to to set up the inside studio, so I just brought the microphone down to where I had been working. And so I'm looking out the window of the trailer at the purple leaf plums that are just about in full bloom. Um, they've they started blooming last week, and they're get, starting to get some leaves this week, but not all of the branches have blossoms. But it's really pretty. And then. Uh, if I look out the other window, I can see a whole uh, patch of daffodils that I've planted. So, so yeah, it's definitely spring here. And then above the trailer, because we've mo- had to move it onto the lawn, um, above the trailer is the Japanese magnolia mm-hmm. uh, with all of those big tulip-shaped blossoms. And it's in full bloom. So, um, so, so yeah, we've got we've got quite the quite the spring going on here. Well, I'm looking on my phone at your temperature and you have high of 61 and sun yes. all day long. In fact, your whole week I'm looking at sun. <laughs> yes, it's, it's I, been now, really nice. By contrast, let me look at the Seattle week and it's, uh, um, we have rain every day. Mm-hmm. Yes, a little cloud with rain through next Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's it's nice today, but we're going to have rain. Oh, yeah. and look, we got snow in the forecast again, too. Oh, oh wow. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I always say that that usually my birthday weekend is rainy mm-hmm. and then President's Day weekend is gorgeous. Yeah. <clears throat> this year, my birthday weekend was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. President's weekend, we got a ton of rain. That was about the same time you guys were getting your snow. Yeah. Yeah. And we got it was a lot of rain. I mean, Mm -hmm. inches worth of rain, uh, more than we usually get in one, in one storm. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I always say October and the like mid February Mm -hmm. are some of the best weather in this Monterey Bay area. Yeah. Just the most gorgeous weather. Well, you know, I often would come, you know, I would come down for stitches. Right. Exactly. uh, Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. We'd sit in your backyard and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a little cool this year, a little cooler than normal this year. 61 is is a little cooler than you know than we usually have at this time of year when it's so sunny. Um but it's yeah, it's it's quite it's it's quite nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I have a little heater in here in the trailer for when I first come in in the mornings. Um but yeah, I don't have it on now. I've got the windows some of the windows open. So 
So anyway, that's the weather report. <laughs> <laughs> the Marsha and Kelly Weather Channel. <laughs> Our lives are so exciting that I have so little going on in my life, it seems like, that I'm talking about the weather. Um, you have a lot going on in your life. Yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about something more pleasant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, should we talk knitting? Yes, let's. Do you want to talk your your projects first? Or? Sure. Yeah, I have so much to tell you about. <laughs> Actually, I I do have a um, I have something new since last oh, okay. week. So I I started a hat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had bought some yarn. Remember, I said I wanted to make charity hats, and mm -hmm. so I bought some fingering weight yarn from Durr and Dye Works. Um, in some of the colors that I thought would go with the, um, some other yarn that I had, you know, some, mm -hmm. some other fingering leftovers. I have a bright pink, like neon pink mm -hmm. leftover from Robert's Argyle socks that I wanted to use, for example. And then I also remembered that I had a skein of, um, Lady Die, uh, the Craftivism Club I had, I had joined, into her craftivism club and got mm -hmm. a skein and some, some uh, stitch markers and a little, a little copy of the constitution. And so that had been sitting for a while because it was purple and yellow, mm -hmm. which it kind of reminded me like of Washington Huskies colors. Mm -hmm. and so it wasn't something that I really, the, the colors didn't really appeal to me that much. But when I opened up my, the, the, package from Dern Dye Works and I set it on the table. I was like, oh, I bet this one. So I went and got that other purple and yellow because it was, it was more like a gold, goldy brown and kind of a, a, a more brownish lavender color. And so I put the other one next to it and I thought this would look really nice with two strands. So I have the two strands held double mm -hmm. and I'm making a pattern, um, I got inspired by the last episode where we had the, the Abington mitts from mm -hmm. Jennifer Lassonde. She had um, a pattern called the Ice Time Hat. And I thought, oh, I'm going to make a, a patterned hat. So I went and got that pattern. And it looked like it would be a good one for variegated because it has, it has like slipped stitches that kind of cross mm -hmm. over the yarn. So you have these extra like loops that, you know, are not, so it breaks up the, the variegation essentially. Right. And the, the pooling over the left breast. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that we had, I'm, uh, for our listeners, if you've uh, looked at the discussion forum, then you'll know what we're laughing about. But anyway, okay. Yes, there was a, there was a post about the pooling over the left breast that Marcia <laughs> talked about in our, one of our previous episodes. So uh, anyway, yes, I don't I have any of that. That's all right. I don't have any of that happening. And it's really nice. The, the two variegated yarns together help to break it up. Mm -hmm. And then the pattern helps to break it up. The original pattern is meant for two colors. And I think it's meant for DK weight, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering correctly. DK or worsted. And I'm just using one color. Well, I'm just using, yeah, I'm using one color created by holding these two strands together. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice. The two yarns are really nice. Um, I like the fabric that you make when you hold two strands of fingering together. Mm -hmm. There's something different about it's heavy. It feels, it feels weightier mm -hmm. um, than just a DK or a worsted weight. Um but it's also really squishy. So anyway, mm -hmm. I, I'm really enjoying the hat. I'm, I'm at the point where I have to start the crown decreases. Looks, I think it looks really good. Um, I like, you know, the colors are not my colors and it's going to be a charity hat. So that doesn't matter. Um, but I, I was glad to be able to use a skein that I had sitting around mm -hmm. with the skein that I bought. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, and then the leftovers of this, I think I'll be able to use. Well, I might be able to make more than one hat. I might mm -hmm. do that. I might just make another hat with the same yarns held together. Or I might take these yarns and hold them together with the neon pink and see what that looks like mm -hmm. um, for the for the remaining hats. But anyway, I decided to start a hat. 
Um, and then I'm working on Robert's socks. In fact, I have that with me right now. Um, I finished the first sock, so now I'm on the second of Robert's socks, and I'm using the Leading Men Fiber Arts Independent Will, which is a gray, and it actually knit up, it kind of looks like camo. It's mm -hmm. gray, green, beige, and brown variegated. Mm -hmm. um, it's really nice. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty color. And I, yeah. I like the way it's looking in the ribbing better than I like the way it's looking in the plain stockinette. Oh, so, so uh, are you going to, so are you just going to do plain stockinette though? Are you going to keep doing that or? No, it's, I mean, my, the, the first sock I did, it's a stock, it's, I like to make socks in stockinette. So it's, I don't know what I was thinking. Every time you hear me say stockinette, I'm talking about two by two rib. I like to make my socks in two by two rib. So it's stockinette all the way down to the heel. So it's two by two rib all the way down to the heel. Mm -hmm. I did an eye of partridge heel flap. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I you know, picked up and started on the gusset, I'm continuing the ribbing down the top of the foot. Mm -hmm. And then stocking it on the bottom of the foot. Okay. So I can see the difference between the fabric in the mm -hmm. ribbing and the fabric on the bottom of the foot that's in stocking it. Oh, I see. Okay. So, and I, I do, I like the fabric in the ribbing much better. Mm -hmm. The, the, the way the color, you know, the way the colors are, are, are blending together in the ribbing is nicer to me mm -hmm. than the way they blend together in the, in the stocking it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not bad either ways. I mean, not the stock. There's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer, yeah, the ribbing. Yeah. So, and then I put um, the toe is leftover yarn from his Civil War socks. It's my hand spun, and it's a little thicker than fingering. And so when I when I did the toe, it's really stiff because mm -hmm. the you know the the gauge. It's a really it's a thicker yarn with the same size needle. And Robert said the toe was a little, felt a little bit tight. You okay. know how picky he is about us. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, are you ever going to knit, knit socks that fit? Isn't that what he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now, and, and now, it's just, just so listeners know, I, it does not bother me at all. Yeah. Um, I just, I always make him try things on and then I make adjustments and I know I'm, you know, I know I'm going to make adjustments. We finally found a toe that he liked. It's, I think it's called the star toe. Um, it, it's, it's a lot like a hat crown mm -hmm. decreases mm -hmm. um and because he didn't like he didn't like the way the toes looked pointed you know in oh. the in the ones it, mm -hmm. if you fold the sock on its side you know mm -hmm. like in sock like when you put it on sock blockers mm -hmm. if you fold it like that I, won't, I say on its side i don't know yeah if you fold the sock I know, that I know way, what you mean. yeah the toe looks fine on those right on those socks that you do with the normal toe Mm -hmm. But if you fold the top of the sock down to the bottom of the sock, <laughs> right? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's pointy. Yes. It looks like a little and, elf, uh, an elf uh, yes. sock or something. It and looks that like an elf toe. Him. It bothers him. And that's I said, Robert. but that's oh not gosh. the way you fold your socks. You never have to look at it that way because. Well, and even you, if you, I guess what I would say is even if you fold your socks that way, so you see the pointy bit, who cares? Right. So it's a pointy bit. It's not pointy when you wear it, right? Anyway. No. He, he, that always bothered him. And so the, <laughs> the Civil War socks pattern Robert. had this toe. And he was like, now this is the right kind of a toe because it's not pointy. I really yeah. like this toe because it's not pointy. So it has a... Well, and does it... And I have a question. Does it? Is it more comfortable to wear, do you think, the, the, way, the, the sort of star toe that you're making? I don't know. Oh. To me, it seems weird because when you get to the end, just like with a hat, you just run the run the yarn through the stitches oh, right, and, yeah. and pull it tight. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if if it were me, I would feel like my big toe is going to poke out of that hole. Mm -hmm. Now, you tighten it down and you weave in your ends in such right, a way right. that it secures it. But to each his own, you know, yeah. he just has his little quirks. <laughs> So on this second one, I'm going to increase, when I get to the toe, I'm going to increase and put a few more stitches on the toe. Mm -hmm. 
or maybe just not decrease as quickly. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll just not decrease as quickly. Anyway, I'm going to make the toe a little bit bigger, um, and then I'll rip back on the other one. I'll, I'll have him mm-hmm. test it, and then I'll rip back on the other one and redo redo the toe. So, mm-hmm. so those are my two. My the only two projects I've worked on this week are that uh, ice time hat and these and these socks, which are not a sock pattern. I really want to. I have some yarn in mind that um some hand spun yarn in mind i think that i really want to do some of the pattern socks one of those pattern sock patterns out of the coffee socks collection Mm -hmm. by dot stabbles i want to do that but i just haven't gotten i haven't gotten to that point so yeah yeah that'll happen maybe maybe this week if i can get myself caught up enough yeah yeah well You've got stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Lots of school stuff. I feel like yeah. I'm behind every day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. It's but it's to... better than last semester when I had only five students and I was feeling very demoralized mm-hmm. by not having any, you know, I mean, with only five students, there you don't have much contact. And I was fine. I was I was grateful for being able to focus on another project that I had going on rather than having to focus on getting my classes ready Uh, but this semester getting the classes ready is really it's really challenging Mm -hmm. so anyway that's my knitting such as it is (laughs) okay (laughs) well i uh so so is that everything should i talk about my projects Mm mm-hmm Okay. Well, I still have the socks. I just work on those periodically, you know, uh, just those regular socks out of uh, the Drops Fable print. And I've done, I think I'm about ready to start the heel flap here pretty quick. I have maybe another inch or so to go. Um, But that's just, you know, I just pick that up if I have, uh, if I'm on hold waiting for, (laughs) to get through with somebody, you know, the bank or something. Anyway, um, but I, and then I also, uh, I think that in the last episode I talked about, I started spinning the olive green merino roving and mm-hmm. I'm plying it with the, um, uh, the dark brown. Um, so it's two, it's a three ply. So two of the green and one of the brown. And I don't remember where I was in the last episode, but I have two skeins that I've spun. Oh, okay. And, the, they're uh, pretty. I saw the picture that you posted. Um, yeah. of your skeins that's a really pretty mix i think it's really nice and i i think that i i liked the green but i just felt it was a, it i i wanted to stretch it i didn't think i had enough i think i have 11 ounces and i didn't think it was enough because you know, kelly i always want you know a sweater quantities worth right you know, it wasn't enough so i thought well if i add this uh do a three ply but add a another color it will temper a little bit and i think it's really nice and um, what I'm hoping is I'll have enough yarn to knit a sweater for my son, Ben, who is very tall, but he's very slender. And um, I think it's probably worsted weight. Um, and I think I'm going to have just, you know, weighing the, t- knowing the number of ounces I have, knowing the yardage I have, the two skeins that I've spun and how many ounces they are. I think I'm going to get about 1,100 yards, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I think he's so thin. I don't think, and it's worsted weight. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it'll be enough. If not, I think what I'll do is I may just order more of the brown, or I have all kinds of um, other roving up there that I could maybe just spin that and do stripes or something. Yeah. Um, Add a few stripes in. I'm not sure. Or do like a... Or maybe order more of the dark brown and um, do, you know, the, that could be the um, the collar and cuffs and waistband mm-hmm. maybe. Or I don't know. I can, I'm not going to worry about that. I just have to spin it right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. So anyway, I'm working on that. And then I just want to talk about the walk along tea. So, you know, the last, uh, a couple things. The, um, the last episode, uh, we had listeners recommend helical knitting. Mm -hmm. which I posted in the show notes, the YouTube video that I watched. Um, I, uh, I, I want to make sure, I think I maybe I didn't, I have not listened to the last episode yet. Um, but I want to make sure 
that what I said is correct. Because um, I started, I think I did, um, I had just started it when we recorded and I mm. thought I actually had made a mistake. I actually did make a mistake in it. So I just want to clarify. Oh, so okay. when you get to the, um, you know, when you're about to change the colors, and so you get to the point where you are now, um, you're knitting along, and you have the, the you're knitting with the first color, the fir- and or I say not color, but the skein, uh, you know, n- number one yarn, mm-hmm. and you're now you're getting, we're going to switch to number two yarn. It's the last three stitches, including the last knit stitch. I think what I said, I think what I said last episode is you slip the, um, the first three stitches before the last knit stitch. Oh, okay. And that's, and then start, and that's incorrect because you get a weird, um, a weird shape. It, it's not right. So it's the, it's the, um, it's really like the last two stitches before the last knit stitch in, and then the last knit stitch. Okay. So let me say that again. It's the last three stitches, including in those last two, in, Included with the last three stitches is the last stitch you just knit. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? No. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> no. I think I'm better. I think if I did it, I'll, I'll just go watch the video. Yeah. But, yeah. The I'm last, not saying it. You mean you, you mean you knit a stitch and then you also slip the stitch that you just knit? So you're, um, you're, so you're knitting with um, color. Yeah. Two, you know, Skate two. One. Mm-hmm. Say you're knitting with skein. No, it actually makes more sense. I, you're, you've already knit with skein one. Okay. Right. And now you're coming back uh, with uh, with skein one. Mm-hmm. No, wait, let me rephrase that. You've <laughs> knit with skein one. <laughs> and you've dropped that and you've picked up two. You're coming back with two. You come up on skein one with mm-hmm. working with skein two. You okay. come up on it. The last three stitches of skein one right you slip those onto your right needle okay and then drops two and pick up one again okay does that make sense i think so yeah i guess what i really the main thing is the last three stitches that you slip you need to in part of those three stitches that you slip is the one that you are working with that you last working with that you're going to drop now and pick up the other color. Okay. If you, if you don't slip it, the, the working stitch, if you don't slip it onto the right needle and drop that working yarn and then pick up the new yarn, Mm -hmm. you get a weird thing. Folks go watch the YouTube video (laughs) (laughs) and don't listen to me. Mostly. I just want to say, I think I said it wrong because it okay. is hard, you know, like anything visual that you're yeah. trying to explain just with words, but you can't it. see it. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to explain. And I think I said it wrong in the episode. Maybe I didn't because I have not gone back and listened to it. So now I'm just confusing the whole issue. <laughs> I think the main thing is if you, it's, it's a fantastic technique. Thank you to all the listeners that recommended it. But watch the video. Don't <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like trying to... When I, so when I make videos for my students, uh huh, um, little video tutorials, a lot of the tutorial videos I use are videos that are already out there, but mm-hmm. we have to have the videos, they have to be correctly captioned. And mm-hmm. so they have to be, ca- the captioning has to have punctuation and capitalization and all of that. And a lot of my favorite <clears throat> YouTube math tutorials don't have any of that. They just have the YouTube captions. Mm -hmm. And so I can't use them. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell students go search on YouTube, but I can't send them to that link or put that link in my, um, put that link in my canvas shell because the materials that I use have to all be accessible. Yeah. So I've made my own videos for things and it's really demoralizing that's my theme word for this pandemic teaching, demoralizing. <laughs> it's really demoralizing to go back to your video. And then so the captions get made automatically, but then you have to go in and you have to review them. And especially in math, mm-hmm. the artificial intelligence, it's, it's way better than what it used to be. And it's way better than having to make captions from scratch, believe me. But 
you still have to, with math language, you have to go back and make sure that the artificial intelligence actually realized what you were saying when you said the integral of secant x dx, right? Because those are not normal <laughs> words. Right. And so the artificial intelligence turns it into all kinds of crazy stuff. So the demoralizing part is while you're reading the captions and correcting them, it's like you're reading about math without mm -hmm. seeing any of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I read what I said and I think to myself, oh my God, you are so confusing. Mm -hmm. You are so totally confusing. <laughs> How could you be a teacher for 32 years and be this confusing? <laughs> mm -hmm. but, the, but then I have to remind myself that I'm reading words that I spoke while I was writing a math problem on my whiteboard screen. Right. So that combination of the... Mm -hmm the view of the, you know, the view of the whiteboard and what I was writing and my words together make a lot of mm -hmm. sense. And anyone who is um, hearing impaired is going to see my words on the screen mm -hmm. and see my work on the screen right. together, right? Right. <clears throat> the only problem, the only person who would actually be experiencing what I'm experiencing when I read the captions mm -hmm. and think about how horrible I am as a teacher <laughs> <laughs> is someone who was visually impaired and hearing impaired mm -hmm. and was having a screen reader read the captions to them. Oh, yeah. So all they would be getting, they would be getting none of the visual input. They would be getting none of my spoken words. They would be getting the screen reader reading these written mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. And so I have to keep reminding myself when I when I read and, you know, correct the captions, like, okay, Kelly, yes, it sounds confusing. Of course it sounds confusing because because you need you need multiple inputs for math. Right. Whatever those inputs are, you, right. I think you need multiple inputs. It just it seems like you would have a really difficult time if you didn't have sort of multiple sources of input. And mm -hmm. very few students would actually have only only my only the written words in those captions. And God help them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, I, I, I'm just going to say what I just said. Go watch the YouTube video. Mm hmm. If your vis if your um your vision is impaired, you can't go watch the YouTube video. Right. Right. Uh, and so I I need to do a better I mean, if I'm gonna explain this technique with no visuals, then I need to do a better job of explaining it. Right. It just occurred to me, like I, I just said go watch the YouTube video, but mm -hmm. not everybody can watch the YouTube video. But I think too, um, some of the like the tutorial that you referenced and some of the mm -hmm. like very pink knits and some of the other tutorials. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're experienced at teaching the technique. They're experienced at teaching the technique, but the one I watched, there's no captioning. And oh. so if you are... Um, so you would just... If you're know. hearing impaired, you, you, well, if you're hearing impaired, you could see what they were doing. If you're visually impaired, you you could hear what they were saying, but you couldn't see what they were doing. And if you're mm -hmm. both, you couldn't... Um, hmm. Because there's many people who are uh, have a vision impairment, but they're still able to do knitting. Right. Um, interesting discussion. I, I um, um, and and we yeah. don't have we don't have a visual podcast, so um, right, right. And I could do I could do a little I could do a little improvement in my um. Uh, my my descriptions description. also well, because a lot of my descriptions is what people don't know is I'm waving my hands around and you've talked <laughs> about that before when we were talking about things we wave our hands around so well um, and I discovered last week while I was editing the podcast that we talked all about the two patterns in our our extremities knit along mm -hmm. and made I mean just eat the like the briefest mention of the what the pattern names were at the beginning, if at all. Mm -hmm. And so I'm listening, I'm like, 
I don't think we ever said what the pattern was. Oh, we're terrible. And so we, I, so I, ins- not, we're I did off notes too. I did insert. I did insert that information. Okay. Um, and and I noticed when I listen to, um, sometimes I like to have people mention the name of the pattern or the name of the book or whatever it is they're talking mm-hmm. about. Mention it more than once because. At the first part when they're talking about it, I might not be paying attention to the name and then I get interested. While mm-hmm. they're talking about it, I get interested and then they never again say what the name of the pattern or book or whatever it is they're talking about is. And so yeah. it is yeah. something that I'd like to pay a little bit more attention um, to making sure that we c- more clearly describe things. Yeah. yeah. Well... I have one last thing I just want Mm -hmm. to say about my T-shirt, because that was actually a really good segue into our next discussion. But before we go into that, my last thing I wanted to say about uh, my walk-along tea is, you know, in the last episode, I think, or one of the episodes I was talking about all the effort I was going into and keeping uh, splitting the skeins into two cakes and labeling them, you know, a and B, and I was pulling from the inside and the outside. And do you remember that whole discussion, Kelly? Yes. Uh huh. So I'm knitting along and knitting along, and I get to the end of uh, uh, both skeins, and I have to attach new balls. I have no because the tags had fallen off, so I have no <laughs> idea which was A and which was B. Oh no. <laughs> So I don't think it matters. So I, mm-hmm. but I just so I remember I had said I have a. a I have a three by five card where I wrote mm-hmm. down the order that I'm going to be using the these half cakes in and with pulling from the inside and outside. I just grabbed the next two that I was planning on using, but I have no idea yeah. who I attach them to. Yeah. <laughs> you can be worried about things. It, maybe it's, you know, worrying that worrying about that is sort of like worrying about whether my, that not liking the pointed toes in the drawer, you know, if you fold <laughs> yes. them a certain way, it may not matter. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny after all this effort I mm-hmm. made. The tags fell off. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. So, Kelly, I was about to make that earlier segue, but then I got distracted. So now we'll segue back into um, our contest that we have going yeah. on. And it's our extremities knit crochet along. So, um, and as we didn't mention in the last episode, we'll be very clear that it's uh, the Abing- Abington Mitts by uh, Jen Lassonde and from Down Cellar Studio, and then the Coffee Sock Collection by Dots Dabble Designs, and that's Deborah, and that is underway, and it'll end on April 25th. We'll do the drawing. Yeah. And... Um, and it could be anything for your extremities, which I looked it up and head, mm-hmm. your head is not, does not count as an extremity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So list the extremities then. I know hands, hands, feet, hands, feet, arms, legs. So just an example, socks, of course, mm-hmm. leg warmers. I'm thinking about another pair of leg warmers, um, mm-hmm. mitts, you know, fingerless mitts, real mittens, Gloves, mm-hmm. wristlets, arm warmers, um, yeah, jewelry, I guess, if you knit like a bracelet or crochet a bracelet. I'm just trying to think of all the things you could put on your hands and feet. So, okay. yeah. All right. We talked about yoga socks last time or pedicure socks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Slippers. I didn't mention slippers, but slippers would be a good, a good choice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I think what I'm going to okay. do is, well, I really like those mitts, um, and I also want to start, so I might start a pair of those mitts, and then I also want to make a patterned pair of socks. I talked about this mm-hmm. last time that I, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm i kind of missing uh, having the kind of knitting where I have to think about, where I have to think about the pattern, so... I'm ready to start a, a pair of socks that actually have a pattern to them. Mm-hmm. So, other than just, you know, two by two ribbing, which is what I normally do. If I want something that I can just, that's kind of my version of what you call vanilla sock. Yeah. What people call a yeah. vanilla sock. I usually always do yeah. ribbing. So if I'm yeah. just doing that. So yeah, that's my plans. So, yes. Yeah, so, well, I'm, uh, my plan is to do the mitts. Uh, because I, as you know, I, I have a lot of socks, but I don't have any mitts. Mm-hmm. And so 
Um, that's what I'm planning. Yeah, on they'd doing. be good. And I and I, um, uh, you would think with all the snowstorm, I would have gone down there in my stash and and looked for something, but I didn't <laughs> do that. So um, I will um, I will find something. But uh, so uh, there's a discussion thread um, in the show notes, so you can post what you're making. Did I make a discussion Actually, thread in Ravelry? Well, you better do it then. <laughs> I don't think I did. Yeah, I think I better do that. You need to do that, my dear. Okay, I will add it to my <laughs> list. You could do it. <laughs> I could do it too. What am I talking about? Okay, I can do it. Um, but uh, so you can. So are, are we going to do? Um, actually, we should. Well, okay, this is bad podcasting. We should have made our decision before. But are we going to obviously have a finished objects mm-hmm. uh, uh, thread? Do we want to do a discussion thread as well? Sure. Or just yeah. do No, the, you can put okay, in. Okay, we'll do yeah, both. We can do both. Okay. Okay. That way, if people so want we'll t- to chat, there's a place for them to do it because <laughs> they won't be able to do it in the finished objects yeah. thread. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll get that set up. And I'm surprised nobody's contacted us to say because I. Well, the episode, um, the last episode just went out. Oh, okay. I was late. So. No. It feels like, cool. it feels like I just published. <laughs> In fact, I did. It was yeah. it was on Sunday, I think, and today's what Wednesday. <laughs> okay, well, we better. I'll do that today then. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, anyway, okay. So just to reiterate, it's it's underway and it will end April twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. And then anything for your extremities, which we've gone over what extremities are. Yes. And um, to again, it's uh, it can be knit or crochet. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and actually, probably, Kelly, should we extend it? It doesn't necessarily have to be knit or crochet. It could be any, like, you could weave something, probably, I, that, as long as it's for your extremities. Yeah, that's actually, that's true. You could use, um, um, what was it, knob bending? Mm-hmm. That we had um, Holiday and a couple mm-hmm. of other people were using, were doing yeah. knob bending. So I suppose so, you could um, do that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway, but again, it's the Abington Mitts by Jen, Jen Lassonde. And Coffee Socks Collection yeah. by Deborah at Dots Dabble Designs. Yeah, and those are so. our prizes. Very mm-hmm. generously donated by the two yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So, um, And then, uh, Kelly, the other thing, we just have to mention again that the Winter Weave Along is going on. Yes. Still. And just about six uh, weeks left. Yes. And it's going to end March 31st. And... We'll um, do our drawing then, for, and um, I am just going to come clean that I believe I said that I was going to weave <laughs> for this weave along. I am not going to weave for this weave along. I'm. <laughs> I just someday I will weave. I remember I said I was going to order a kit, mm-hmm. and I was going to talk to you about which kit, and I've done none of that. So um, I'm just going to give up. I'm not <laughs> going to participate. In the- That's fair. <laughs> I, I pressure's off now. I don't have to mm-hmm. feel bad anymore that I've not done any of it. So, um, but I have enjoyed uh, seeing what people are posting. So, yeah, it's know, a we'll very active. It's a very mm-hmm. active discussion thread, yeah. and lots of people talking about weaving, and we've had lots of people start weaving. Um, yeah, yeah, except me. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, <laughs> that's all right, Marcia. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I've been doing other things. I, As I say, I've been knitting and I've been uh, still doing lots of cleaning and purging and um, getting ready for the um, the contractors to come into the Ballard house. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I've been doing other things. Um, yeah, no, that makes that makes total, total sense. And it's not like you have a, a weaving set up. I mean, you've woven one thing with my help. Yes. So, yeah. Well, and also Kelly, now we're, now that we're having this conversation about it, I do need to uh, talk to you about the, the cause it, it's the loom. Do you remember when we did the weaving project mm-hmm. um, that it's missing? The loom is missing one of the top boards that holds the, um, uh, see, this is how little I know. I, I know, but the what's it reed. called? The, um, the reed. Thank you. Yes. I never can remember that. It's missing the top wood piece, and we had to put some uh, two pieces of duct tape on mm-hmm. to hold it. And so I thought what I need to is figure out 
what piece I need to order and then order that. Oh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So I need to just get it in good working order too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyway. Well, that could be a summer project. That can be my weave along <laughs> project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to. Anyway. So um, do we have anything else that we need to talk about? No, I don't think so. I, I had high hopes of having already started the um, f frog and toad for mm -hmm. this episode, but I had not. I did buy the pattern, so mm -hmm. I am I am committed to making it. I just never had a chance to get started, so yeah. I just keep reminding myself it's a sixteen week semester, mm -hmm. and we are currently in week four. So when I make it oh. through this week, I only have 12 weeks to go. I get my, our, our, I just got an email today that my, um, my registration of educators who are under age 65, we start registering for the vaccine on March 3rd. Oh, nice. so that's, that's very cool. Um, yeah, so I've signed up, you know, we have to put our schedule in for fall. So I did create my schedule for fall and my classes are online because I didn't know how things were going to go. And mm -hmm. um, I, I have a feeling that the vast majority of our classes, um, except the ones that are hard to convert to online, are going to be, um, are going to be online in the fall. Okay. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to say I was teaching face to face and then end up being disappointed and having to, mm -hmm. you know, change at the last minute and do a lot of scrambling. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put in my schedule to do the same thing I'm doing this semester again. So yeah. I get a do over. <laughs> a do over. Mm. But now, oh, yeah. So anyway, so, but I am looking forward to having my vaccine. I'm looking forward to at some time in the future um, being on the classroom, you know, on the classroom floor and actually writing on the board and talking to mm -hmm. students and all of that. So I am. Um, uh, well, my brother is getting his vaccine, the first dose on March 13th, I think. Okay. Um, and. Uh, and I don't know if they have this in all states, but in the state of Washington, there's a website called Find Your Phase. Mm -hmm. And um, you can put in all your information in your situation. And uh, I don't qualify yet. Yeah. Um, I don't meet any of the criteria. So, but, um, so I, I, apparently they will, according to the website, they will notify you when you're eligible. Yeah, I have, I um, registered... I've actually registered like four different times because they kept changing in the state of California um, mm -hmm. what they were, the information they were asking for. And, and I wasn't sure that my registration was counting, you know, but, mm -hmm. but now I'm getting, I'm getting text messages periodically and I'm getting emails periodically. So, mm -hmm. and then the school is giving us information too. So I'm getting a lot of information about, about how it's working, but every state is different and the counties are not the same. Like the state of California um, it says that if you're over 65, you can get a vaccine. If you're over 65 and you're a teacher, you can get a vaccine. But in Monterey County, there we don't have the vaccines to give out. So, mm -hmm. um, so they haven't, you know, they aren't, they aren't, they hadn't been taking appointments for that until just very. Re I think those appointments start this week. But, you know, the state website had said that educators and people over 65 were being vaccinated, which was not true, right? Because it's not true everywhere. It's true in some counties, yeah. but not in others. There's been a lot of, I, there's just a lot of confusion. And, um, well, and I have to say, you know, my friend Gary, who you know, uh, lives in low-income housing. And so uh, the fire department came. They were, and that, and um this was uh, two weeks ago, I believe, and they just vaccinated everybody in the building because most of the people in the building are over 65. Mm -hmm. Gary is not, but most of the people are over 65, so they just vaccinated everybody. They said they had 150 doses, excuse me, 140 doses, but only there's only 97 apartments, mm -hmm. which typically there's only one person in each apartment. So those extra doses, they said to Gary, just 
if your friends want if long, if your friends want to come, if you know anybody who's over 50 and they want to get the vaccine, just tell them to come to the building. So he called me and uh, and some of his other friends, so there were five of us showed up and we sat in Gary's apartment for 3 hours waiting for them to come and and um, notify us when it was our turn. We're all masked up, sitting as far apart as we possibly can. I had my knitting. And after three, he kept going down and checking and, uh, because they were doing it in the lobby of the building mm-hmm. and they kept, he, he kept going down and checking. And finally, uh, around two o'clock, he went back down there for the last trip down to check, find out what's going, you know, are we close? And they said, oh, they've gotten cold feet. They're not sure if they should vaccinate oh. people. Yeah over 50 when the rule is over 65. Mm-hmm. So they had all those extra doses. I'm like, what are they going to do with those extra doses that they're not going to give to us? Because th- yeah. we were all over 50, but not over 65 yeah. that were there. And they just went, apparently they said they're going to go out onto the street and just stop people and ask them if they were over 65. Oh my gosh. Vaccine. Wow. And I, that doesn't and I sound thought, very and, organized. <laughs> Well, and I had mixed feelings. I have to say, I had mixed feelings when he called me mm-hmm. that am I usurping the system right, by right. I'm not 65, so am I, is that right? Like, I had sort of this slight moral, mm-hmm. like, mm, I don't know if that's right. But then I thought, isn't it important just to vaccinate as many yeah. people as possible? Yeah. So I just went up there, because I don't know when I'm going to get it. Yeah. So I, I went, and of course, it didn't work out. But then I thought, it feels really loosey-goosey. Yeah. Like, it seems like it should be if you have, and I know that the, from what I've read, the vaccines, once you thaw them out or whatever it is, because they have to be kept so yeah, cold, yeah. and once you prepare them to administer them, you have to. You can't just stick them back in cold storage again. Mm-hmm. And so I can see where they're just going to, but it felt super unorganized and loosey goosey yeah. that they. Um, and also, if you know there's only 97 apartments, why would you show up with 140, 140 dose? Yeah. You know, it, it seemed weird to me, but um, anyway, in the end, I didn't get it. But um, um, hmm. now, the only other thing I'm going to say about this whole rollout of the vaccine and um, is the media, like all the news programs, every time they talk about vaccinating people, they show pictures of people getting jabbed in the arm <laughs> with these needles. And I want them to stop <laughs> showing that. <laughs> Please stop showing that. Please just show the little vials of vaccine going yeah. through the assembly line. I can handle that. Some things you stop don't stop showing need to those see. needles yeah. going into arms. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly. Please right. stop. Yeah. <laughs> I always tease Robert because he passes out whenever he has to have yeah. whenever he has to have blood drawn, and he's not here. But if he if he had just heard me, he'd say, "I don't pass out. I just have to lie down." <laughs> So he uh, always has to go lie down for a little while because the visual, and I tell him, don't look. Yeah. And he said, I don't anymore, but I know what mm-hmm. it looks like. And so he just has yeah. this visual in his mind and, and that yeah. makes him feel queasy. And then he has to lie down because he, if he doesn't lie down, he's going to fall down. Yeah, I uh, I uh, I have to say like blood draws and va- you know, any kind of injection or thing. I, I don't love it, but I, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I just don't look. Yeah, who and, wants and to think, see that? Then, yeah, I just don't look. And I think, and I just think about knitting. Mm-hmm. And I think about the dog. And I think about what I'm A making A field dinner, of sunflowers. I think about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway. All right. So, well, enough of that. We will uh, we'll talk in two weeks. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.